Hi, and thanks for tuning in for today's Connect video. It is Tuesday, November 28th. We are just about into the month of September this year. Our focus has been all in, and I trust you are all in for the cause of Christ. A couple of things before we jump into the topic for today. Arizona Christian Schools Tuition Organization, ACSTO, is a tremendous blessing to those of us who live in Arizona, where we can direct the state tax dollars that we're going to have to pay anyhow, but we can direct where the state puts that money. And one of the things we can do through ACSTO is direct those tax dollars to kids that are in Christian schools that we know of, and we it's a, it's a great blessing. Most states don't have something like this, but we do. We have eight donation options for you to choose from. Check out the information in the church app, or if you had a, a paper bulletin this past Sunday, there's information from the bulletin there. Uh, and uh, contact the office if you have questions or want to uh, get a little more information on that. Second thing is Christmas services are upon us. We're about ready. To, we're, we're jumping in just, a, just about another week and a half or so. Uh, this Sunday is the last Sunday in the current series, The End of Time. But starting December 10th, we'll have our choir Christmas program, Hold On to Hope. So the choir will minister through song, but I'll also have about a 20-minute sermon on that day also, on that topic of hope. December 17th will be a Christmas focus during that service. The message will be the parents of Jesus. December 24th, Christmas Eve, no morning services. Remember, no morning services on December 24th, but we have our two Christmas Eve candlelight services, 3 and 5 p.m. It is one of the biggest outreach services we have of the whole year. So make sure you're inviting family, friends, neighbors, coworkers. Some of you put post-it notes on the wall after the service this past Sunday. I want to encourage you to be thinking and praying about that for this coming Sunday to do the same thing. We'll do that during the closing song this Sunday. But uh, uh, just a great opportunity to invite someone to hear the gospel and just have a great experience for Christmas this year. And then December 31st, New Year's Eve, our normal Sunday morning there, 9.30 and 11 o'clock services. Uh, we still have a Christmas focus on that day, though. The message will be on the reception of Jesus. So those are the things coming up throughout the Christmas season here at the church. Now, over the next four Tuesdays, I'm going to focus on some of the foundational beliefs and practices that we value and practice here at CDOBC. And today I'm going to focus on baptism, all right? So let's just ask the question, why do we get baptized? Why do we do baptism anyhow? Uh, well, a couple of things. It's in the Bible, it talks about this is the first thing we should be doing after we come to faith in Christ. Um, so so it's, it's, it's stated mainly in the Great Commission, right? Um, go therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. So you have just an order there. So making a disciple and then baptizing them is what we're told to do by Jesus. Now, why do we get baptized? Well, Jesus got baptized, so he's an example for us. Matthew 3, verses 13 to 17 describe uh, his baptism, tell the story of his baptism, but a couple of the, a little bit from that text says, Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. And then after his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water... So we get baptized because Jesus was baptized. Obviously, his baptism was a little bit different. He didn't become a Christian and then get baptized. Um, his baptism was kind of the, uh, the beginning of his ministry. After his baptism, he goes into the wilderness for the 40 days of temptation. And then when he comes out of that, he starts his ministry, basically. So Jesus' example is one of the reasons we get baptized, because he did. Secondly, his command. He commanded us to be baptized. I referenced this passage just a minute ago, the Great Commission passage in Matthew 28, verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we baptize because Jesus told us that this is what we should do. When someone comes to faith in Christ, they should then get baptized. So this is what we 
practice because Jesus commanded us to do it. And then the third reason is this is what the early church did. We see the early church early church practiced baptism. A couple of passages in the book of Acts. As the early the church is starting up, we have this documented in the book of Acts. Acts 2.41, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. So we see at the, at the very beginning, the day of Pentecost, Peter's sermon on Pentecost, people respond by faith in Christ, then they get baptized right away. Acts chapter 8, verse 12. But now the people believed Philip's message of good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, many men and women were baptized. Right? Once again, belief is there. Uh, when, we, when we see the belief, then there's baptism. And then Acts 19. This is Peter teaching in the city of Ephesus. When he finds and, and meets the disciples, the Christians there, he says, but John, him, this, this is what the people told him, but John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come, meaning come later, meaning Jesus. As soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, so the believers in Ephesus were not baptized yet in the name of Jesus. They were baptized under the baptism of John. And so Peter, or, um, uh, yeah, Peter is saying, hey, this is something that needs to happen. Or is it, is it Paul? Paul's there. Sorry, <laughs> I'm getting mis- mixed up on the apostles. Um, so so Paul goes ahead and, and, uh, and baptizes them because they hadn't been baptized in the name of Jesus yet. So we, we see in the, in, the, in the Bible not only Jesus' example, his command to get baptized, but also the, the early church's practice of baptism. Those are the reasons we do this. Now, when do we baptize? It's always, notice in those passages in Acts, someone gets baptized always. It's always after they come to faith in Christ. It never comes before they put their faith in Christ. This is why we don't baptize infants, because we don't see that in the New Testament. We don't see that practiced in the Bible. The early church did not practice that. Jesus didn't command that. And belief is what's required. That's the pattern you see repeatedly every single time. There's never an instance where someone gets baptized before they believe. All right. This is why we call it believer's baptism. That's how we refer to it here at the church. So if you've been baptized as an infant, uh, many of you I know have been baptized as an infant, that, that's a wonderful event for the family. It, it may be an important spiritual event for you personally to know that that is something in your past, that that happened when you were an infant. But you had no say in that. That was not because you came to faith in Christ. It was a church practice, a, a religious or faith practice. It's, it's a wonderful thing, but it's not a New Testament baptism. Because a New Testament baptism, there's always faith first by the person, and then they get baptized. That's a New Testament pattern. So the order in the Bible is always belief first, and then baptism. And baptism is a public proclamation of your faith. Right? It's the way, way you tell the world, it's the way you tell the church, other people, that you are a follower of Christ. You're identifying yourself with Jesus. Now, let me walk through uh, the question often is asked, why do we immerse someone when we baptize them? Why do we baptize in the mode, if you will, or the manner in which we do? Let me talk about the three modes of baptism that are common. First of all, there's sprinkling. All right, Sprinkling is a mode that you'll often see. And uh, it's when, usually it's uh, when the priest or pastor, uh, they, there's a bowl of water that's a, a very special bowl of water. It's dedicated, and they he'll dip his fingers in there and sprinkle the water on the, usually on baby, but not always an infant baptism here. Uh, or they'll scoop it up a little with their hand and, and sprinkle it on the, the person's head. Um, now that, that, that's a very common practice. And it does have biblical connections and a picture there that relates to the Old Testament sacrifices and the sprinkling of the blood of the sacrifices on the altar. So, so it's, a, it's, it's a practice and a mode of baptism that has some imagery tied to um, forgiveness of sin through the sacrificial system in the Old Testament, the sprinkling of the blood on the altar. So, so it does have a biblical connection. That's one mode, sprinkling. A second mode is pouring. 
right? Pouring. This is when you take, usually from that same kind of basin of water, and they'll either take a, uh, a ceremonial cup or pitcher or something, and they'll, they'll pour water over the head of the baptism person, the person getting baptized. And um, this also has some biblical connections uh, in the in the Old Testament sacrificial system, there were drink offerings that were poured out on the altar. Uh, I think it's the Apostle Paul who talks even about he wants to be poured out like a drink offering in service to God. Uh, so there's this picture of being poured out. It's tied to the altar and sacrifice and everything else and an offering to God. And so it has biblical connections too. So pouring is another mode. The third mode is immersion. This is the mode we use. Because of these reasons. Number one, it's what the word baptizo in the Greek, it's what it means to immerse or to dunk. Uh, it was actually a term from the garment trades when they talked about dyeing fabric. And they would take the fabric and immerse it, dunk it into the fabric. And if you've ever done that, you know the longer you keep it in the dye, the darker the color will be and so on. So it's, that's what the word means. It's also what we see is the early practice of the church. Even Jesus, the verse I mentioned earlier when when he was baptized by John the baptizer, it says he came up out of the water. So there's this picture of him coming up out from being immersed in the water. It also has the greatest uh, symbolism and, um, and, and, and picture it gives us. So when someone gets immersed, there's an identification with Jesus and the forgiveness of sins that we have at the moment of our faith. So first it mentions, or it gives us a picture of a total, total body cleansing, if you will, uh, to be cleansed completely from our sin. If you sprinkle some water or pour some water, uh, that can clean a little bit, right? But not the whole body. And immersion is a picture of the complete forgiveness, the washing away of our sins that we have through our faith in Christ. The second thing is when I'm baptizing somebody, um, they are identifying, there's a picture of them, and they're identifying with Jesus in his life and his death as we stand there on the water. All right, So they're identifying with Jesus' life and death on the cross. And then when I immerse them, they're identifying with his burial, and when I raise them up out of the water with his resurrection. So it's a, a, a picture, a physical picture uh, and symbol of the life, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that... Be- Immersion gives us that picture like, in, in a greater way than the other images give us any picture of forgiveness and, and Jesus. So what does baptism do for someone when they get baptized? Does it give them more grace or more forgiveness? No, not at all. You have all the grace and all the forgiveness you ever will need and more at the very moment of your conversion, at the very moment you put your faith in Christ and seek the forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus and by his death and burial and resurrection. Is it an act of obedience? Absolutely it is. So when we get baptized, we're obeying what God has told us to do. And that always, that's always a good thing. That always pleases God when we obey what he's told us to do. Um, it also publicly identifies us with, with, with Christ. It's a way that we publicly identify that we are a follower of Christ. We believe in Jesus. We're, we're trusting and resting in him for our salvation. And so that's what baptism is. That's why we baptize the way we do. And that's why it's one of the core key values and practices here at Canyon Del Oro Bible Church. Our next baptism is coming up in March of 2024. Right now it's scheduled for March 17th, 2024. Uh, we can if you're in, if you've never been baptized after faith, right? Maybe you've been baptized as an infant, but never after you came to faith in Christ. Then you still need a New Testament baptism. Well, we, we got the bat- baptisms coming up in March of 2024. If you're interested in talking more about that, or you want to get baptized at the next one in March, uh, we can meet anytime and talk through that, uh, so that I can make sure you're ready to get baptized and everything else. Myself or one of the other pastors will meet with you and and walk through all that with you. So if you're interested, just let us know, and we would love the honor to baptize you in March. And it's a celebration for the church when we have baptisms, and it's one of the great Sundays we have throughout the year when we do baptism Sundays, because it's when people are publicly identifying with Christ, and they're following the command of Christ to get baptized. It is a wonderful, wonderful day, and we cherish that as a church, and I hope that either you've been baptized 
or if you haven't, and you've come to faith in Christ, that you'll get baptized this next year. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you for your love and your grace and how you've communicated certain things to us in your word, and you've done that with great clarity, and baptism is one of those things. Father, I pray if there's anyone watching this video who's never put their faith in you, never have, have come to you in faith as seeking you as their Savior, forgiveness of sins, I pray they would do that. They would do that right now. And Lord, if there's anyone who has come to faith, or those that pray that prayer right now, I pray, Lord, and if they've not been baptized uh, after coming to faith, I pray they would do that. They would follow your command. They would obey what you've told us to do. And they'll, they'll get baptized in March. So, Father, we pray that that will happen and that you are honored and glorified and praised and the gospel is proclaimed as a result. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks a whole lot for taking a few minutes to watch this. Uh, we'd love to have you join us this coming Sunday, December 3rd, Communion Sunday, also the last Sunday in our current series, The End of Time. So please join us. 9.30 or 11 is the time for our worship services. And if you can't join us uh, here in person, if you're out of town or just can't be here, would love for you to join us on the live stream. Check out our website or the YouTube channel, and you can watch the live stream. The 9.30 service is what we live stream. In the meantime, I hope you have an awesome week this week, and I pray you're a blessing to everyone you meet. Bye-bye.